Americans. And so Stephen A. <clears throat> is uninformed. Uh, Stephen A. has never been someone who could write white people. His editors have always covered for that. He's oh. been basically an affirmative action sports writer who finally oh. found a lame talking oh. kid that he's qualified for. And that's why he moved out of the sports writing deal altogether and just talked shit because he's never been able to write and white people have had to carry him in that regard. And- oh. Oh. That's what I'm talking Damn. about. <laughs> Man, if I, hey, Whitlock, I was gonna do a clap. Matter of fact, I'll do a clap. Hopefully it come through all right, man. He was jumping on top of their head, man. Like, you see Whitlock going in? I ain't going to talk too much. I'm going to show some funnies real quick. We're going to get right back into this. So this is like a little more than halfway through where I want to take y'all to. Whitlock is going in on Stephen A. Smith. I don't even really got to say too much, man. Let's get it. So we're going to start from the two-minute mark, man. And this over here on the Politicking Podcast. Look like... Uh, uh, Jason Whitlock and this dude, I, I don't know his name, I, I should have should know that, but uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description to their podcast so y'all can catch these live, man, but uh, let's get it. Is this so, is there something behind this? And Stephen A, to make the kind of money he makes to discuss sports, in the middle of the NBA playoffs, as a matter of fact, to take that kind of time and address Kwame, what's really going on here, Jason? Uh, and so this is going to take a minute for me to unpack. Uh, take your time, brother. Take your time. <laughs> it goes all the way. way in. And I may unpack a lot. I, I hope you, because I want to hear your pushback feedback. So you may have to take notes or just, you. hopefully you got a photographic memory. Okay, let's uh, go. But look, I, I put it out over social media that very strongly, look, I'm all the way in Kwame's corner. And that does not mean I think Kwame Brown is perfect, but he is clearly, clearly pushing a bigger topic than just his playing career. And I'm so appreciative of that, the, the message that he's trying to get out, the disruption that he's trying to. I will say, y'all, like Whitlock on this interview. This interview by itself didn't change my mind on Whitlock. I will tell y'all that, man. Just sit sit back and listen, y'all. Sit back and listen. Be Especially if you fuck with Kwame. If you fuck with Kwame, you fuck with Whitlock. To a system that he calls the go-along, get-along game. And it's a little cabal still of elites and blacks who have been uh, anointed by the uh, system or the machine, the media machine, the Hollywood machine to be, as Kwame says, the gatekeepers of chaos. You know, I say the gatekeepers of dysfunction and degeneracy and making sure that we as black people never talk about the real issues related to us. And so, uh, you know, Stephen A initially, because Kwame did attack Stephen A. Smith, because Stephen A. Smith, uh, he, he back during Kwame's dessert. playing days, was one of his most vocal critics. Mm -hmm. And and Kwame went after Stephen A. Smith like he's gone after a lot of people. Stephen A. Smith initially put out over Twitter, he wasn't touching it. That man has a right to his opinion. He's staying out of it. And I celebrated Stephen A. Smith for doing that when he put that out over Twitter, I saw that tweet. social media. I saw that tweet. He That's what made me go look into what Kwame was talking about. And put together an eight or nine minute uh, attack on Kwame. Oh yeah, God, that. if you want to see it, go look at my other video. Kwame's critics. Oh no, I didn't upload and, that, but you can find that uh, easy. Curtis, I've gone back and forth on my feelings with Stephen A. Smith. You know, I think it was in 2012, maybe, I called out Stephen A. Smith in a column about his use of the N-word on ESPN. Mm. Stephen A. kept getting in the habit of saying, nigga, please, on ESPN. 
Oh, I actually remember that. I was oh, like, did they let him say that? Yeah. I was surprised. I he did that. it twice. I think I was back in like 2000. Let it go the first time. He did it a second time. Back I called him out on the call. He was heavy. That's what called him. Talking about him and the show he was doing with Skip Bayless at that time. And Stephen A. Smith has never spoken to me since. Hmm. And we were friendly. I wouldn't call us friends, but we were friendly and supportive of each other. We worked in the same uh, building. Because Stephen A. are basically the same age and our I careers can't. overlap. We rose around the same time. But in 2012, he quit speaking to me. He's been mad ever since. I've made considerable outreach trying to end the, the beef. Uh, I certainly don't take back what I wrote in the column, but... You know, me and Stephen A. got mutual friends. At the top of that list would be Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah is someone I'm very close to and have a lot of respect for and have tried to be respectful of Stephen A. Smith and a supporter because Stephen A. Smith, from from time to time, does things that I agree with. And I I don't hate on the man for for having the success he has. Eight million a year, whatever. I'm all for that. Uh, all right, I'm only gonna pause it. So usually I'm keeping a buck with y'all. Usually when somebody else know how much you make, they hating on you. But as of right now, Stephen A's hate is is warranted. Let's go. Uh, but I have to say, I've been crystal clear. If you come at Kwame, I'm coming for your head. And so Uh-oh. there will be no more outreach by me towards. Stephen A. Smith, and and I don't think okay. Kwame's the perfect person to defend himself from the attacks that Stephen A. Smith ha- has put on him. I am, because Steve. Boss, all right, so he feel the same way I felt. He saw the shit Kwame was doing. He knew Kwame was going to need some help. That's why Kwame say we the people. You know what I'm saying? And Kwame been for the people. You know what I'm saying? Copyright strike, nobody video. He ain't did no funny business, but... Somebody left in the comments, I talk too much, so let me keep it going, man. My bad, y'all. Stephen A. Smith tried to talk about Kwame's playing career again here in the past week or two. Well, mm-hmm. see, I can talk about Stephen A. Smith's playing career as a journalist. Is that right? I'm qualified to do that. Well, give us this bill. In that us this profession. Let us know what's happening. Particularly in the sports angle of it. You've been in the back room. The Let us know what, what goes I can, on. I can recognize buffoonery and bullshit better than anybody else. And that's what Stephen A. Smith has been on, buffoonery and bullshit as a journalist. Okay, all right. And so Stephen A. <clears throat> Strong words, but let's go. uninformed. Uh, Stephen A. has never been someone who could write white people. His editors have always covered for that. Is he the main weather of ESPN? basically an affirmative action sports writer who finally oh. found a lane talking shit that he's qualified for. And that's why he moved out of the sports writing deal altogether and just talk shit because he's never been able to write. I'm sorry. I know I was supposed to pause it, but goddamn, is he taking a bike or is he taking a goddamn bike? He taking Stephen A. bike. (laughs) Chris Tucker telling me about himself, man. Hold on. Matter of fact, I don't even think he done. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on, man. Let's see what he got to say. And white people have had to carry him in that regard. And that's why he'll always be beholden to them. And that's why he'll always be a gatekeeper of the dysfunction and chaos and go along with the go along, get along gang, as Kwame said. Uh. He said, and this is typical of Stephen A. Smith. It's marked his entire alleged journalistic career. No one is attacking Kwame Brown personally. That's what Stephen A. Smith said. He went on to say, every single comment has been about your game, nothing personal. Now he's talking about Matt Barnes, Stephen Jackson, Charlemagne the God, Jamel Hill, everybody is covered up. No one has said anything personal. This is typical of Stephen A. Smith. He's mm. fucking uninformed. Always. He used to work Always. with him. And I'm going to cite some examples for Kwame That's... to help him out because this isn't his area of expertise. Okay. In That's 2005, sweet. Stephen A. Smith went on ESPN television right. and criticized Marty Schottenheimer, football coach of the Chargers at that time, I believe, NFL coach at the time, for he said he should have kicked 
on third down. So if they missed it, he could re-kick it on fourth down. <laughs> Curtis, I, I didn't see that one. This does not All understand right, NFL. Man, so I tried to find that. Y'all know I'm good at that. He has a few more examples, and I found them. I'm going to let him keep going. I'm trying not to talk too much. NFL rules. We all laughed at this shit at the time. You get one chance to kick a field goal. If Here, you, you miss, kick on you first down, you got to get a ball to the other team. It would be the same as saying uh, if LeBron James fouls, gets his sixth foul, uh, they should sit him down and bring him back in so he can get his seven. Dumb. You foul out at six. You miss a field goal, you don't get to re-kick it on fourth down. This is the kind of uh, – he doesn't know what he's talking about other than the NBA. A couple years ago, two or three years ago, Stephen A. Smith went on TV talking about a Chargers-Chiefs game mm -hmm. and started talking about how he couldn't wait to see the Hunter Henry-Derek Johnson matchup. Hunter Henry tight end for the Chargers, Derek Johnson middle linebacker for the Chiefs. The only pro and he talked about what a great season Hunter Henry had had, <laughs> and he couldn't wait to see this this matchup on Monday night or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> Hunter Henry had missed the entire season with an injury. He had not played. <laughs> Derek Johnson had been cut by the Kansas City Chiefs before the season. He wasn't on the roster. Oh shit! You can't make this shit up, and you know how he ain't making it up. You know you fucking with your boy Rock. I got you. Watch this. Hold on. Watch this, man. <laughs> fuck it, man. If I get a copyright strike, fuck him. That, you know, he can do some things. I'm keeping, my eyes, click off. I'm keeping my eyes on this matchup right here. Spencer you got your out. linebackers. <laughs> I'm sorry? Spencer Ware is out. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I forgot. I'm sorry, Max. I'm sorry. Yeah. Absolutely. He is out. But I'm thinking Tyreek Hill. Okay. I'm yeah. thinking Patrick Mahomes. I'm also <laughs> looking at the San Diego Chargers on offense. And I'm thinking about Hunter looking? Henry and the way that he's played this year and as effective as looking he's at been. Face. He's going up against Derrick Johnson. And I got to keep my eyes on that because I'm looking at it from the standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to have some faith in, in Henry and the way that he's played this year and as effective as he's been. He's going uh, Derek Johnson. Hunter Henry, he's been out. He's been out all season. I'm looking at it from the standpoint. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Uh, we'll close that window out, man. This is up next, man. This boy. Go in. Go ahead, Whitlock. He's on TV talking about a middle linebacker that doesn't play for the Chiefs. And a Chargers <laughs> tight end who hadn't mm -hmm. played all season, all season. and he oh, couldn't wait to man. see this matchup. The motherfucker has been uninformed his entire career. White liberals have covered for it. That's why he will always be beholden to them. Damn. Let me give you another example. Just last year, January okay. 2020. He got example. He ESPN covered. Put he, Steven unqualified to talk about MMA and UFC. But because they're paying him $8 million or whatever the hell they paid him, and because he's their pet, oh, because, he's, because he's their pet, they put him on UFC. Okay. Cowboy Sarone versus uh, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor breaks an orbital in this dude's eye, face, whatever. This dude goes out cold. Cowboy does. Stephen A. Smith gets on the post-show uh, talk with Joe Rogan and tells everybody, the ESPN audience, that Cowboy quit. You don't say this type shit. In fact, you don't say shit like that. So, you know your boy Chop, man. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Check this shit out. Look, look, look he can't wait to say something dumb. He can't wait to say something dumb. We gonna let him do his thing, man. Go ahead and say something dumb, Stephen. A. This is tough for me because here I, I, I'm standing next to a legend, okay? And far uh, be it for me to refute anything that Joe Rogan says, but here's my reality. We haven't learned a damn thing about Conor McGregor based off of this fight. Really? Because who were you? Listen, the man did not get hit other than one. Look how you look at him. Like I mean, he didn't. Look, look, <laughs> Even he I like. Not hit that much in the last week. Okay? And I don't know. I mean, come on, y'all. Woo! We don't know, and we know that Conor McGregor Come is a on, champion. Man. We yeah. know he's a great fighter. We know that he's box office. He's phenomenal for the sport. We're all happy he won. If you love this sport, you got to be happy that Conor McGregor won. Skip, but dude, you didn't like I want to soccer, but because Cowboy Cerrone 
just didn't show up. I get him, Rogan. Get him. I disagree. We learned. We Shut him down. <laughs> Look at his face, bro. We learned that he can land okay, a head kick. Yeah, we fair. learned that he could beat him down. Okay. We we learned that this guy Listen. performs in the Look, Steven, on, bro. We already knew that, but we learned that he was focused, and we saw. I, look, I, I've been aware of his training. He was. He was in tip-top shape for this, and he was treating this like this is a potential resurrection of his career. Nurmagomedov humiliated Floyd Mayweather, humiliated him. So there's two humiliating losses in a row. This was his return, and it was a pretty significant return. I could stand corrupted on that because what he's saying is when you look at what Conor McGregor did, you can take something from seeing what he did right. based on what he's done in the past. He this was last time he was on UFC with his fist. This time it was a leg kick. It was the shoulder. So that's something new. All I'm trying, all I'm alluding to is what Cowboy Cerrone was incapable of taking yeah. inside of 40 seconds. Like you said, Joe, if you're done in 15 seconds, it's hard for me. I understand what you're saying. I'm not disagreeing with it. I get it. I learned something from you tonight. I got that. In terms of what Conor McGregor, something different came to his arsenal. But, my Lord, you couldn't back up Cowboy Cerrone. You couldn't yeah. catch a deep breath. You couldn't circle the octagon just a little bit, get your bearings on you. You couldn't do anything. 47. <laughs> Rogan looking at him. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, bro. You can't make this shit up, man. Somebody say this, dude. Uh, somebody save him. Because we all come and shoot him. <laughs> we all come and shoot, man. Somebody say that, man. In a combat sport around combat people, the entire UFC MMA community went off. Joe Rogan did 30 minutes on a podcast with Josh Thompson talking about how out of bounds, how uninformed, how stupid this shit was. Fighting Stephen A. Smith ain't been back on UFC since. Dana White, the head of UFC, talked about how ignorant this shit was and how uninformed it was. Stephen A. Smith is paid to talk shit, uninformed shit. He's paid to be a buffoon. Look at this uninformed Good nigga that we got out here that we paying eight million dollars. That's the represent. That's the best black journalism has to represent itself. Is Stephen A. Smith, who knows one topic, the NBA, and that's it. And then when it comes to the NBA, he used to be used to be an information guy of some renown. He Allen Iverson. News, news around LeBron James. He used to be in the mix on that and would occasionally share some good information. But now it's all shit because he's stretched too thin. He's overused. He's trying to do shit. He takes himself too seriously. He's an elite. Hmm. And he represents the elite. And what Kwame Brown has been trying to say, and this is my big problem. It's not, it's not just that he's uninformed. He can't see the big picture. Mm -hmm. That's what drives me crazy. Kwame Brown has Gosh. been on a sports level and on a cultural level yep. trying to hint at the big picture. Big. The big picture is y'all's information and the shit y'all talk about is childish and uninformed and you're afraid of certain people. Let me break that down to you. What Kwame has been saying, and there's plenty of evidence and proof, no, I'm not a bust. I was a 19-year-old kid drafted straight out of high school who went into the most toxic environment in all of sports. Michael Jordan's last two years in the NBA with the Washington Wizards. You can ask Jerry Stackhouse, who a year ago talked about how much he regretted being in Washington with Michael Jordan. I remember Stackhouse. I Jerry Stackhouse played at the University of North Carolina. He was nice. Surely grew up idolizing Michael Jordan. Right. Had the balls to put his name on how toxic that environment was yeah. and how playing with Jordan, Jordan diminished his respect for Jordan and Damn. he felt hurt his development. Jerry Stackhouse. That was a grown man at that time yeah. playing with Jordan. Kwame Brown was a 19-year-old kid. I've seen four uh, former Washington Wizards teammates that were there in D.C. with Kwame and Michael Jordan. Eton Thomas, Eton Thomas, uh, Jahadi White, Tyrone Nesby, and oh, I can't think of, oh, Chris Whitney. 
They all did a podcast together, all talking about how toxic the environment was for Kwame Brown. Mm. He's and so 19. what Kwame Brown has been trying to say is, hey, man, you sports writers are in the hip pocket of Michael Jordan. You won't tell the truth about my career. Mm. I was a 19-year-old kid that walked into the most toxic environment. Jordan didn't even want me there. They wanted Elton Brand. Tell the oh, truth. Shit. I'm not a bust. I know that. I'm they someone who at 19 walked into Jordan's ego at the end of his career when Doug Collins was there to be the head Doug coach Collins. and Doug Collins was partnered with Michael Jordan. He was Man, just he basically Michael Jordan's puppet. And I mm-hmm. like Doug Collins. I'm not disparaging him. But it was the situation he was placed in. Kwame Brown's career was ruined by Michael Jordan. Stephen A. Smith, none of these groupie athletes from Stephen Jackson to Matt Barnes have the balls to criticize Michael Jordan. Man. That's what Kwame is talking about. The journalism is addicted to the elite and the powerful. It will not be the voice for the voices. Kwame Brown was voiceless, and none of these cowards would stand up for him. And now, even 20 years later, these cowards are doing the same shit to this young man. And here's the other bigger point. that The man is talking, uh, no one said anything personal about him or blah, blah. Charlemagne the God... went on TV and started talking about this man, father killing somebody, his brother's killing somebody, and Kwame may snap. Uh, uh, Matt Barnes uh, put dinner. out a video talking about, uh, you got your, my dick in your mouth. Uh, Steven Jackson called him a dirtball human being or his, his life is dirt. What are y'all talking about? This man is sitting here trying to protect his fatherhood. His ability to be a good father to his son, being a laughing stock, and I'm, his son is, I think, 16 years old now, a sports fan, likely, maybe an athlete. He's listening to his father be disparaged 20 years later, father minding his own business. Kwame's ability to be a father is being undermined by people just getting off little jokes. Damn. So I'm going to just end it right there. The link is in the description. If y'all want to go check out the full interview, make sure y'all head over there. Uh, Jason Whitlock, he's over there with this dude. Sorry, I don't know your name, brother. <clears throat> but he over there with him. And uh, as y'all can see, Whitlock coming off the top. He ain't playing with Stephen A. Smith. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm surprised. But you know what's funny, man? And it's, it, it really is funny. Is that I have been following Whitlock on, on Twitter for the past, like I said, about three, four years. And a lot of people was dragging me because I was actually agreeing with, uh, with what a lot of, I don't know why I'm getting tongue tied, with what a lot of Whitlock was saying on Twitter. Like a lot of the stuff I was retweeting. I honestly fuck with Whitlock. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I know how the media is. Sometimes you got to say shit to basically get your name in the, you know, you got to get your name out there. But. I think right now, Whitlock, is he see the bigger picture. Out of all the, the people that's been on ESPN and all that stuff, he he's seen the bigger picture. But uh, let me know what y'all think, y'all think man. Uh, Whitlock is out here. You think he DJ. You know what I'm saying? You <laughs> there. Man, they about to set off a fire mixtape the way he, he letting the fire go. Let's say he ain't. Let me know in the comments what y'all think, man. Make sure y'all go over there. Check this dude's channel out. Subscribe to him, too, because I subscribe. Matter of fact, let me do some some service. Bam, like the video. Go over there, like the video, subscribe. Go over to Kwame Brown channel, like, subscribe. And, of course, like and subscribe to my shit, man. If you haven't, check check the channel out. Go to my car channel. Go to my gaming channel. And all my gaming people, I got some stuff on the way. But y'all see the way this channel going. We popping off. Appreciate all the support, all y'all, man. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. It's a lot more coming. Because Cold Park... Kanye is on his way. <laughs> Gemini season, baby. <laughs> it's about to go down. Oh, man. My birthday this weekend, too, y'all. I'm going to catch y'all.